We welcome you to uh, our Wednesday evening service here at Redemption Church. And uh, we're glad you're a part. Get your Bible because we're going to get in the Word here in a minute. Call a friend, text a friend, let somebody know um, to tune in. But we're glad you're a part, aren't we? We certainly are. So good to be with you, those that are here, and of course, those, our friends online. You know, I've had this thought on my mind this week and how God is a supernatural God. And many times we're just looking into the natural. We expect the natural. Mm -hmm. But I've just had it on my heart. We need to be expecting the supernatural because Amen. God is a supernatural yeah. God. Amen. So what who is, knows, tonight may be supernatural night. Well, you know, isn't that what Sid Ross says? It's naturally supernatural. That's a good <laughs> statement, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> We give credit to you, Sid. Good statement. Praise God. Well, uh, you can be seated, everybody. And if you're out there in the uh, viewing audience and you're standing, you can be seated too. But I doubt if you are. Praise God. Well, again, it's a joy to be with you. We believe God's got something real special in store for us all tonight. And that beautiful song, it already encourages me. I think that's worth uh, getting together for just to hear that and so sing beautiful. along with that. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Talk about God's ability to take the ugly and make something beautiful out of it because mm -hmm. he specializes in it. Believe me, he really That's does. Right. Praise God. So uh, we're going to get going here. We're going to receive our regular Wednesday evening offering. We do that every uh, Wednesday because it is our normal church service. If it weren't, we wouldn't. But since it is, we do. And uh, all of you out there, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. We, we really do. Uh, through this Past year, we've been through this pandemic and all the things that we've been through, and everybody has been so faithful and so generous and so thoughtful, and we certainly don't take it for granted. We really appreciate you. We want you to know that we do. There's a way there on the screen that uh, will tell you, instruct you on how to give. Amen. Yes, you can give online, you can give through text, or you can mail it in if you want to. That'll be fine, too. Mail is amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> we don't do anything but mail anymore, hardly do we? Praise God. Well, let's pray over the offering, and then we'll pray over the Word as well, and we'll get going. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to just um, open this precious book and to look inside it and see the wondrous truths that you've given to us. And Father, as we bring our offering to you, we you've told us in this precious book that we look in, that if we would give, it would be given to us again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Jesus himself said that. And so we believe that. We don't give just to get. We give because, well, first it's the right thing to do. But our gratitude drives our giving more than anything else. That's the motivation above anything else, our thankfulness. But we know you give back and we thank you for it and we don't turn it down. We're smart enough to see your promise and stand on it and stand for it. And so bless your people as they give, bless the word as it goes forth. And we thank you for doing that. And we believe you will and are in Jesus name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, we've been talking a little bit of time now on, on blindness and one of the, probably one of the biggest uh, problems with humanity in general is they're blind to certain things. We all have things that we don't know. And so there's, there's knowledge and information that's, it's not necessarily hidden from us, but we have to go sometimes research it and get it out and dig it out. That's why people go to school. That's why people study the Bible. That's why you do it because you dig out truths that can change and affect your life. But there are certain things sometimes um, you can't receive from God what you have um, as a precondition when you go to God. You can't go to the Bible with your mind made up what it's going to tell you. Because if you do, you won't hear what you want to hear. Now that's a good statement because we all know we've probably done that before. Well, of course. Yeah. And we, well, uh, one of the things in here is and, and I'm, I want to go to it because I, I think that uh, it's back here. I don't know what point it is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I'll get to it. I got so many tabs in this thing. 
These, this outline has been well used. I'll say <laughs> that. Amen. Um, but blindness comes from conditioning or prejudice or bias. If, now, when you, when you use in our society today the way things are, when you use the word prejudice, you generally put it over in the category it's been, it's been uh, talked about or touted so much in the area of racism or something of that nature. And so we've got a, we've got a tunnel uh, definition. We've got, a, we've got a very limited definition of what prejudice is. Prejudice is uh, the, the word um, judge with the prefix pre on it. So we pre-judge. The word the prefix pre means to do something before. Uh, so when you judge something before you know anything about it, then you got your mind made up before you start. You can't, you can't look at things with an unbiased view because you've already got the blinders on. You, you, you've got a conditioning that's set in you that will not allow you to see. Mm -hmm. And so often we go to the scripture that way. We go with a bias or we go with a prejudice toward it. Now, prejudice again can be over in the area of racism. So I don't, I don't say that's a non-existent reason, but I think it's a very limited one. And I think that often when we hear it, that's where we go. We don't think about anything else. And uh, Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 4 and, and 5. He said, therefore, judge nothing before the time. That's what he means. He said, don't prejudge something. Don't judge it before you're supposed to judge it. The Bible says it's a fool that answers a matter before he hears both sides of the story. And uh, I have found, I've spent, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And you deal with people in various situations and you'll have somebody come to you with a story. They've got, they've got their story. And when you hear their story, they've got a way of bending that story favorably for them. And that's why God says don't judge anything before you've heard the other side of the story. Because I can tell you when the wife comes to you and tells you about her nasty husband, well, you'll want to, you, 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 you'll take her side and you, you want to you, you want to help her kill him. You, you, you believe me, you will. I mean, you think what? And then when he comes in, mm -hmm. now see, there's three stories that are going to happen here. Okay, he comes in with another rendition of the same story, and you go, oh really? Well, now your anger has been tempered with a little bit of uh, additional information, shall we say. So once you understand the why behind what happened, you begin maybe to temper it a little bit. Now it's interesting, there's the story of the wife in this case, and there's the story of the husband, but now there's a third story. And the third story is the one that you hear when they're both in the room. <laughs> And they both have instant rebuttal power. And now we might get closer to the truth. Now I've learned to not judge a situation before you hear both sides of the matter. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the thing now with social media. The biggest problem with social media is you have people who troll people on social media. They, they, they are button pushers they're trigger pullers. They want to say provocative statements just to see what you'll do and how you'll yeah. respond. They do it many times anonymously. They don't, or they use a phony name. They might use a name, but they don't necessarily use theirs. So they can hide behind anonymity. They can hide behind, you know, the dark corner over there, the crevice. They can hide in the dark, hide in the shadows. And then they spew out things and then they'll begin to take a good thing and they'll begin to cast stones at it and they'll begin to take a good thing and they'll begin to turn, uh, turn it to a wrong thing. And you take an innocent hearer, they'll begin to take the side of the troll. They'll begin to take the side of the person who's, who's maybe they've got a bias or maybe they're just mean. There, you know, there is a devil and he is evil. 
and he does evil things. And so um, I learned long ago to just, uh, I don't really care. If you listen to the good, you'll be depressed by the bad. So the best thing you can do is just leave them both alone. If you're smart. And just be who you are and be comfortable in who you are and not let somebody paint you into believing something or uh, creating something that is, is non-existent. You know, the scripture says a whisperer separates chief friends. There are people who go around and they whisper little tales, they whisper little stories. And what they do see when they do that, they create a bias mm -hmm. or they create a prejudice or they create uh, an alienation against something or somebody. It may be a person. It could be um, a thought process. In other words, um, in the political arena, uh, you're in the world of ideas. That's where you are. That's, that's what makes politics what it is. Y yes, there are people who represent the ideas, but it's not the person necessarily that's the most important thing. It's the idea that they push that can be the good or the bad. And so there are people who lie to create a narrative that's inaccurate about a person. Uh, and we see it all the time in politics. I mean, you know, you know you can lie legally in a political race. People think, well, you can't do that. Well, they can. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a violation of the law to lie in a political race. Do you know it's also not a lie or not a, not, a, not a crime to lie on the floor of the House or Senate? Now, if you said, if, if, you, left, if you left the floor of the House or Senate and went out and said it, you could be libelous or it could be slander and you could be sued for it. You do it on the floor of the House or the Senate and it's protected speech, even though it's a known lie. And the person doing it know it, knows it. And everybody listening knows it. But they do that to create a narrative. And what they do is they take, and I'm not talking about politics so much here, I'm just trying to illustrate the story of how prejudice or bias gets set up in people. We begin to assume things that are not accurate at all. And I'll guarantee you, it happens, of course, in the political world. Uh, it happens in the business world. There are people who create um, problems for maybe someone they don't want to see get promoted because maybe it would steal their promotion or maybe they just, for whatever reason, don't like them. They, they don't care for them. So they'll, they'll whisper around and they'll create things, which creates um, a skewed look. In other words, somebody who could, could make a favorable decision for somebody, they get, they get a prejudiced view mm -hmm. because of a narrative that was given to them that doesn't have to be accurate at all. The scripture says their word doth eat like a canker. Now that word canker is a, is a word related to the word cancer. And it says there are people who will deposit those words in another person's mind or in another person's heart and it'll eat like a cancer, and it may not have any basis of truth in it at all. Now, I found over the years, I can tell you truthfully, now there's a lot of things that make pastoring, some have said pastoring is the most difficult job in the world. Now, I don't know, because I've not had all the other jobs in the world, but I can tell you what, there's a lot of people who started who fail at it. Yeah, you can bet on that. And a lot of people who start don't stay at it very long. And there's, there's reasons for that. But now having done this for, for the length of time that I've done it, and I see these things come and go, uh, I can tell you the, without question, the most difficult thing that you have to deal with as a pastor are people who are gossips mm -hmm. and people who want to create problems and want to sow discord among the body of Christ. Because they got that little thing on them. Maybe they're jealous of who knows what. Now, I'm not trying to say they'd be jealous of me. Now, they, they do do that. But they could be jealous of a lot of things. Maybe they're just uh, intimidated by their own failures. Maybe, they, they're, maybe they're not successful. Maybe they don't succeed. And so therefore, they don't want you to succeed. Now, why do you think when Jesus 
went to his own hometown of Nazareth. He could there do no mighty works. Why do you think that was? It was the bias that was created from the people around that, you know, local boy goes out and succeeds. Local boy comes back home. So now we've got to accuse him. Where doth this man get these things? That's what they said. And so they begin to create a narrative and, and, and it created such a problem in that, in that town of Nazareth that Jesus, the power of God was on him to heal. The power of God was on him to deliver. And the scripture says, because of what had been created in the atmosphere that had been created, it said Jesus could there, didn't say would, it didn't say would. He said he could there do no mighty works. So the power of God was stopped by people who created bias and prejudice and discord and stuff among themselves. And if you'll find, you'll find in the gospels that Jesus and what he ran into in Nazareth caused him to, move. that's where he lived, you know, guys. You hear this, Jesus of Nazareth, you hear that? Okay. Jesus moved his ministry headquarters from Nazareth to Capernaum because of that. So I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. That when you get into this bias and prejudice and judging and judgmentalism, and I'm going to tell you, we've got, a, we've got great access to it now with social media. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people just say things, I can't even believe, I just can't even believe it. I can, it's, well, I tell you, I can believe people do what they do, but I can tell you this, I have a hard time believing a person who would name Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior would let that garbage spew out of them. That's something really wrong with you if you can do that. I mean, really wrong. And you know, there's another little aspect of this that you really need to think about. The scripture says with the same judgment that you judge by is the same judgment that's coming back on you. We were talking to somebody here just last few days and they were about to get a new car. They, you know, the Lord was blessing them. They were about to get a new car. And they said that this could be a problem where they work. And uh, I said, well, give me some clarity there. He said, well, they just have a problem with other people doing well. Think about it. That's why the Bible says you rejoice with them that That's rejoice. Right. Because when you judge another person unworthy to receive the blessing of God, you have just now capped your life right there. Because the judgment that you judge by is the one you're going to be judged with. And you have declared yourself unworthy to receive because you declared another person unworthy. What do you think of that? We ought to make it sweeter if we want to walk in the blessing and live in the blessing. Amen. Well, you know, I, I was just uh, saying the other day, um, you know, when you have people around you, uh, maybe not so close, but involved in your life in some way, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's just something there that's not right, whatever right. in the relationship, you don't fully understand that. But then you begin to see God God's blessing on them. Right. You better keep yourself right. Yeah, you better. In that. And you better do exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. Rejoice with them. Even though you've got this issue, you've got this problem, but don't work against them. They're in the body of Christ and let pray. That's the thing to do. Instead of, um, you know, not wanting them to get the blessing that is around them and it's about to come to them just like, Amen. You know, you you better not give in to that. You know what that is? That's bait. It is bait. That's bait. And you know what bait does? It lures you into the trap. Take a bite of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. to be spiritually minded, we have to... Um, we have to grow up in God. We can't remain babes. We've got to grow up in these relationships that we have and learn and understand. If we handle them right, then we can go on with God. But we'll, we'll go around that mountain. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the children of Israel. 
what happened to them? They kept going around and around, around and around. Mountain. For years, they went around the mountain. They did it. They turned a two-week journey into a 40-year Exactly. <laughs> I mean, so we don't want to do that. Yeah, really. And so learn. I, I want to learn. I don't always learn that first time, but yeah. I sure do try. Well, back when we were uh, young, it did, it was, it, we were at one time, weren't we? One day we were. Yeah, I, I seem to remember that back in the <laughs> past there somewhere. But when we were, you know, getting started in the Lord, and it can happen in a variety of ways, but we began to experience some blessings from God. Now, when we started, we started, I'm talking about with nothing. And I mean, literally, and I'm not talking about in the ministry. I'm talking just, about just yeah, our married marriage, life. Yeah. you know, just, just getting going. And uh, we began to, you know, we, we were able to buy our first home and we were really young when we did that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was, it was God, you know, we were, we were tithing and giving and God was moving us up and moving us on. And boy, I'm going to tell you what, you think we'd, we'd assassinated the president for some of our friends. You know, all the ridicule that they had for, you know, you're getting above your raising, you, 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 you're getting ahead of yourself, you, you're going to fail. You're gonna, yeah, I'm telling you, I wasn't ready for that. Well, in the neighborhood, you shouldn't move there. You yeah. know, you need to be and in it was a, it, it was a nice neighborhood, but it was just it nice. was a reasonable, you know, yes. reasonable, reasonably nice. I mean, it was we, nice for us. Yeah. Well, it was real nice for us. Yes. Anything would have been real nice for us. <laughs> when you don't have anything, you know, up is, you know, just up. So, but people, uh, you know, we had that happen when we began to prosper in a little bit. And when I use the word prosper, the, the biblical definition of the word prosper is to mm -hmm. do better. Yeah. I'm not talking about being rich and, you know, just having everything. I'm not talking about it. But you begin in God, as you begin to prosper in God, you begin to do better. Life begins to get better. And you find yourself wearing a little bit better and driving a little bit better and living a little bit better and having a few things that you didn't have. It happens to all of us. You know, you, you know our home was furnished in nothing. We had empty rooms is what we had. Mm -hmm. So it didn't take much to get better when you, when you just don't have anything. But there are people who, who will try to intimidate you out of your blessings because somehow it's a challenge to them. Now, see, that's exactly what happened in Jesus' hometown. He could there, the, 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 the bias against what he was doing, who he was, the bias against him was so strong that it stopped the power of God from moving in that place. Now, I did a series here a while back about where you could go, to, where you go to church could save your life. We got a lot of comment on that. I mean, really. But you'll find over and over and over in Scripture a number of places where Jesus had to take them out of the house to heal them. In one particular place, he had to take them out of the town to heal them. Because there was so much going on in that atmosphere that a person could die and not, be, not get the healing power of God into their life because of the conditions mm -hmm. that had been set by bias, prejudice, talk, ridicule, unbelief, you name it. And so you have to be careful with that. Exactly. And you can, you can cut off the favor of God in your life mm -hmm. by, by doing stuff. And so when we talk about that, that's why I wanted to, to get on this here a little bit. When we talk about blindness uh, can come by conditioning or prejudice or bias, I know when you use the word prejudice, everybody goes again immediately to that racial connotation. Again, that's real. But my goodness, that's only just a minor part of it. Just, uh, just a little bit. It's real deal. But it's, it's, it's not what the Lord is really saying. Our prejudice can lead us into, mm. well, it puts a blindness on us that you can't overcome. And you will convince yourself that you are right. And that's why you can't go to the scripture to try to prove your points. You, you need to validate your points from scripture. Don't misunderstand me. But when you go to the Bible, you go with all of your preconceived notions laid outside your prayer closet. And you go there to listen 
and you go there to hear. And when you go there to hear, if you'll leave your prejudice outside the room, you might hear. But when you go in there telling God what he's supposed to tell you, or try to confirm your meanness. I was, I was really upset with somebody. It's been a long time ago. I don't get that way anymore. But I was really upset and I had a right to be. Believe me, I really did. And uh, I was not quite as sanctified as that moment at that moment in time in my life. But I told Nora, I said, I'm gonna call him on the phone. That's back before we had, you know, cell phones. We had to do the old normal house to house thing. And I told Nora, I said, they didn't live all that far from me. I said, I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna go whip them. And I probably said it that way too. He said, I'm gonna beat the daylights out of him. Because he's just a liar. He just was. And he was happy about being a liar. And I was his victim. And we're going to straighten this out, pal. Okay? And Nora hung the phone up, but... Being the spiritual between, person I am. But, but, but <laughs> guys, between Jesus and a good wife, you may get to heaven. That's all I can tell you, you know? But, but anyway, you know, you just, you just, you know, you just get put out with it. But it's just what you said. It's just bait. Mm -hmm. it, it's something to pull you out in the street and to get you... In a, in a position to just well, do something you shouldn't do. You know, you, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't respond. The Bible says be angry and sin not. I was angry and I was going to sin. And then I just asked Jesus to forgive me. You know, he said, turn the other cheek. Well, that may be Jesus, but I ain't turning no other cheek right here. You forget that other cheek thing. If there's going to be any other cheek turned, it's going to be his. It ain't going to be mine. But you know how you get and uh, I'm kind of embellishing it a little bit, but not much. But uh, anyway, like I said, I've grown a little bit since then, shall we say. But you get really hurt, and, uh, and, and you are hurt. I mean, you have been wronged. It's not like you made that up. You, you, you were. And I'm talking about hurt you to the point it could cost you your career. I'm not talking about a little bit. I'm talking about serious business. And uh, I was, uh, you know, doing my spiritual stuff. I was praying and reading the Bible. And I, you, can't get, you can't get it off your mind. You ever been there? You, you can try to get it off your mind. You can't get it off your mind. As much as you want to, you can't get past it. And so uh, I'm going to read the Bible and do my things, you know, do my spiritual stuff. And... Uh, now, you, you, you might think I'm not telling you the truth here, but I am. I mean, you, or you might think I'm in error when I tell you this. But I heard, I mean, I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, he said no, you need to put that Bible down. I said, well, I'm trying to recover here, you know, and uh, you better listen to the Lord. And uh, he said, you need to put the Bible down. And he said, you need to let somebody preach to you. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, they are unbiased. He said, all you want to do in the scriptures is find the scriptures that won't, they'll try to get me to kill him. Now, I know none of you sanctified folk have ever done anything like that. <laughs> yeah, the Lord. The, the Lord will smite my enemies before my face. Get him, God. Get him, God. You know, really? <laughs> You think I'm just talking. I'm not just talking. And the Lord said, you need to let some neutral person minister to you that does not have this working through them the way you do. And that's the only way you're going to get healed from this. That's the only way you're going to get recovered. And I did that. And I just, you know, just put on the tapes. At that time, it was tapes, you know, the, the cassettes. And you just put them on and you just let people preach faith to you and bring life to you and bring wholeness to you because see, they're not affected by it. So they can talk into your life in a way that's going to pull you out of what you're dealing with. I'm talking about bias here. I'm talking about the blindness that comes from being biased or prejudiced or, or having that, uh, this conditioning, if you will, stop you from receiving from God. 
And you can do it. You see people go through a divorce and they get so mad at the other person, they can't stand them. They can't stand to see them. And they just want to see them get hurt. They want to see them go broke. They want to see them die. Well, folks, you got to get past that. That's right. You can't do that, you know. Well, you know, uh, there's the prejudice, like if God is blessing mm -hmm. in your life and, you know, maybe friends, so yeah. you thought. Or maybe they really are, but they, mm -hmm. they just have issues with uh, the resentment for what God's doing in your life. But do you know that can happen spiritually? If you start sure. pressing into the Lord, you grow in God, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. God starts speaking to you, ministering mm -hmm. to you. You start sharing with people. You see people get born again, studying the Bible, and boy, you're just all excited. And I'm telling you, there are yep. people... That's that right. will be uh, very uh, resentful mm -hmm. of that and try to hold you back. Now, I remember... Well, how do you know that? Well, because it might have <laughs> happened to me a couple yeah, of times. I, I don't know. I know how you uh, know that. Yeah, but I remember <laughs> in the olden days, yeah. in the beginning... Back before, when we were young. Yeah, back when no. we were young <laughs> and not in ministry. Um, but we had a small group, Bible group. Yeah. And we would meet in our home and the homes of right. the other people too. And it was so precious. Yeah, we really were just good. all growing mm -hmm. and God was doing good things. And, um, and we were so hungry. All of us oh, yeah. were, were just hungry. And we got to a certain point and you and I, we started getting revelation yeah. from the Bible because yeah. we started reading the yeah. Bible Major. and we started seeing all these things, the supernatural <laughs> signs and wonders and the baptism of the Holy Spirit yeah. and Jesus is a healer yeah. and you can cast out the devil with the name of Jesus. And we started seeing all these things. And before we know it, oh, it my. was just like we had the plague, you know, it's just start backing off, yeah, start these backing off. These Bible studies turned into war zones. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we had determined, yeah. you know what? We love the Lord. We love you, but we're going with God. And you got to make your own decision about yeah. what you're going to do and right. the direction that you're going to go. But right. we choose to go with this book. That's right and the Holy Spirit, and that's exactly what we did. And there was, um, you know, there was that resentment that yeah. was there, and it was definitely a block in that relationship. And you hate mm -hmm. it. I mean, you hate yeah. it. And it never went away. No. There was, there was never a restoration of those relationships. We just had to move on. And, and they still, were friends, too. Yeah, and they're still where they are. Yeah. They never saw the yeah, light. Yeah, kind of not we so just, good. We, but just, we just went on. Yeah. So you have to determine what you're going to do. And I can tell you this now. I'm, just listen to me. God wants you to have friends. Yes. Okay. Friends are good. Friends are from God and all that business. But I'm going to tell you what, if your friends are in the way of you moving forward in God, I promise you, God will take those friends out of your life. Hmm. I'm going to tell you something else too. If you put your faith in somebody more than you put your faith in God, he'll take them out of your life. Now, I'm just telling you, it's just the way it is. Now, God wants you to have friends and he wants, you know, people, it's okay for people to do good things for you, but it, there's a point in time you have to determine your relationship with, with the Lord before it's with anybody else. Just before it's with anybody else. And if you put anybody in the way of that or any, any situation in the way of that, see, God wants you dependent on him. That's the difficulty with children growing up. Children, uh, they are dependent on their parents. I mean, that's, and that's good. And, and parents represent God to their children. Yes. So that's the way God intended it. But there's a point out there that you come to that what was a blessing now can turn into a curse. If, if that child can't, you know, can't leave home, so to speak, and I'm not talking about necessarily um, physically leaving home because they may have moved away, but they hadn't left home. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's still that dependency. And see, God will have to break that tie if you're going to grow in God, he, now he's not going, I'm not talking about breaking your ties with your parents. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about 
getting that mindset out of you where there's a dependency. God wants you dependent on him, not anybody else. Yes. Um, I know early here in the church, if we had not learned how to trust God, and of course I say early in the church, it's still the same way. It, it, just, it just takes more money today than it used to. But I'm telling you the truth, we would have utterly failed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it would have been a bad failure too. Yeah. Because we had committed to it. But there was nobody that could, there was nobody to bail us out. It was just the Lord. You, you either, either God does or you don't, you don't get it. And there was no, there was no plan B. There was nothing in the back closet. That's just it. Either God shows up or you're just in trouble. And he always has. He always has. I mean, he always has. And you know, I want to say something here. I, I really do believe that God wants us to have friends in our life. I, do too. I think those relationships are very important. Yeah, I do so too. anything we're saying here tonight is yeah, not to speak no. against that. But there are just times that, you know, things change because people, their attitude toward, you know, you're growing in God and you're walk right. forward in the Lord and that kind of thing. Because if you read in the book of Acts, the early church, and I love to read about it, and, and we see there it was so important, those relationships, yeah. they would eat house to house. And yeah. I think a lot of that needs to return back to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I really yeah. do that, that we see the importance of community and relationships. But I think the point that we're making here tonight, and I think we've made it pretty clear, is that if someone will not allow you to grow in God, right. then it's time you know, that you have to do something. And I, right. I remember when you and I did that with these people, because we were good friends right. um, with these couples that we were involved right. in Bible study with. And I can remember after we had to do that, there was a joy in my heart because I knew we were following God. Right. There, there was that. But there was also this sadness that was right. there because these people that we had gone to church with, that we um, had such fun, you know, fellowship times and, uh, and then studying the Bible together and learning all right. these things. And then all of a sudden, that is out of your life. Right. And when it's out, you can't try to make that something. It, it's just not going to be... Well, you're, what it was before. You're bucking up against the Holy Spirit yes. to do it. Mm -hmm. If you, The more you try to do it, the more sour it gets. Mm -hmm. it, it just won't work. And one thing I learned through that process, I might have gone through, um, you know, just um, being without friends and, and a loneliness or whatever comes for that. But that was just for a time. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, adventures in God, he had something <laughs> else for us. Yeah. And we went forward and there were all kinds of people that have been involved with us and partnered with us to help right. us do what we do, you know. So it, it is very precious. Well, well the, these things can be, I'm not saying they always are, but they can be tests in our life. Mm -hmm. They really can. And I know, you know, people tell you, well, God won't test you. Well, no, that's not true. He does test our heart. He does prove our heart. He won't test you with evil, mm -hmm. scripture says. But there are tests that God brings into our life and, and you have to determine where your priorities are. If the scripture says, if a man will lose his life, he'll find it. Now, what does that mean? If, if you don't understand that spiritually, you won't understand what that means. It'll just be double talk to you. But what it means, if, if you're willing to lose control or your stubbornness about having your life and you will yield to the person of the Holy Spirit that knows what you're put here for anyway and has gifted you the way he has. And, and the Holy Spirit knows you better than you know you. He really does. He knows more about you. He knows what it would take to make you happy. He knows what it would take to fulfill you. He knows what it would take for you to uh, come to the end of your life with a fruitful life that you can look back on or live life in a wasted way. And you see so many people I'd say the vast majority of people, I'm not going to say they waste their life, but they spend their life so much on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. 
just so much attention given to things that mean nothing or very little. And if you'll lose your life or you'll relinquish control, isn't that really what it means to make Jesus the Lord of your life? See, we want him to be savior. We don't want to go to hell when we die. Save me from hell. Save me from my, the, you know, consequence of my sin. But the problem is, is we don't want to make him the Lord of our life. We don't get, want to give him the reins to our life. We don't want to give him control. And I don't believe scripturally. Now I know that in the early days of this whole surrender process that we start when we come to the Lord, we're pretty, you know, we're pretty raw. We, we, we've not developed much. And so uh, we do a lot of things we shouldn't do. And we act ways we shouldn't act. And we need, need to have patience with, with young people who are, and I say young in the Lord, I'm not talking about necessarily young in age, might be. Um, when we need to have patience and we need to have some tolerance, we need to give them space. Mm -hmm. um, and, but as, as we grow, we, we have to outgrow certain things. But if we, if we can't get past certain issues, and like we're talking about like the Bible study, for example, uh, that was, had we yielded to them, I promise you we would not be doing what we're doing today. No. That, that would not, not have happened. So there are tests that come in your life to see what you're going to do with it, to see how you're going to treat it. Mm -hmm. Will you pass it? Will you fail it? You can fail a test as easily as you can pass it. If you couldn't fail it, it wouldn't be a legitimate test. And you get tested with things. And if you've got a, if you've got a problem with jealousy, mm -hmm. there's going to come somebody in your life that's doing better than you. That's all right. Now, how are you going to act with it? You got to you got to deal with that. You got to know what to do. And when you're, um, I t I'll tell you, really, you know, I'm kind of going to meddle here probably a little bit, but the Bible says if two or more of you would agree on earth as touching anything, that whatsoever you ask the Father in Jesus' name, He'll give it to you. Okay, you know that Matthew eighteen nineteen right through there. Now, there's a there's a there's a difference between head agreement and heart agreement. And if you, if you are with somebody, let's say you both need a new job. Okay. Let's just say, and you're both in a, in a position of believing for a new job. That's not the person you need to pray with because that person will try to get ahead of you. And it's just human nature. It's like, well, they got a job and I didn't. So, so that agreement turns into disagreement. You understand? If you're going to pray for somebody or get somebody to pray with you about something you want to have happen, let it be a clean prayer. Don't put that, in the, don't put that one in the mix, especially if you're praying for a husband. Two of you guys don't need to get together and start praying for husbands because the next thing you know, somebody's mad at the other one. And if you get married first, my God, I know you'll lose a friend then. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to be gentle here, but I'm telling you how it works. Pray with somebody who's, who's, who's got it, who's clean in it, who's not going to be affected by you getting it. You understand? And I'm talking about, I mean, we're talking about what causes blindness in people. These biases and these prejudices that we bring into relationships, these preconditionings. See, in the religious world, that's what causes all religious wars. Because people have a way they want to do it. Well, I'm right and you're not. Well, maybe. I used to be absolutely convinced I was right until I found out some things. And I wasn't right at all. And see, when you get a person who's absolutely determined that they're right before they do the research. You, you don't know if you're right till you research the topic. I thought, I, I mean, I was absolutely convinced. I thought, now listen, I thought the Apostle Paul was a Southern Baptist. Now and, listen, okay. I did too. And you know what? <laughs> if he wasn't, he should have been. Okay. I mean, then you just grow up that way. Now I'm not against the Southern Baptist. I'm just talking about that was my root system. <laughs> and you know, 
Well, we know that we're right. Still, you start making a little trek through this book <laughs> and you start seeing some things. Hmm, I didn't know that was in there. Well, I found there's a whole lot of things in there that I didn't know were in there. And I'm not saying they were wrong. So again, give me some space here. Put down your profit rocks, okay? Um, and I'm not, I'm not in any way saying I'm right about everything I'm doing either. This growth process is a never ending process. That's, it's what it is, a process. And I'm gonna tell you, if you're unwilling to change because you're, you're bound and determined to hold your position, your prejudice will keep you from growing in God. If you really wanna grow in God, some people don't. They'd rather protect their religious conditioning. They'd re rather mm -hmm. protect their space. True. They don't care about growing in God. They care about being right. Being right is more important than being accurate. Being right to yourself. And it might not be right. It might not be accurate at all. But these are things that happen to us. It can happen religiously. It can happen in business. It can happen in relationships. It can happen with friendships. It can happen in all kinds of ways, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're talking about how people have blind spots in their life. Mm -hmm. These are ways that it happens. Of course, it's not the only way. But it is a way. Mm -hmm. But Amen. you don't have to be blind. No. God, well, that's why God said to pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yes. Pray for revelation, you know, so you don't have to be blind. Amen. You know, and the number one way that we break blindness off of us and take the blinders off is we get the Holy Spirit in us because he's the one who leads and guides us into all the truth. And you do that first by asking Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord and giving your life to Him. The Bible says that when we come to Him, that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And that's the first step toward breaking off blindness for life, blindness for relationships, blindness as it relates to knowing God. That's how it happens. And you do that by giving Jesus your life and asking Him to be the Lord of your life and forgive your sins. That's how you do it. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, do it. Say, Jesus, I take you right now as my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to you to serve you today and forever. Sin, Satan, I don't serve you. You're not my God. You're not my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. Now, if you meant that, and I know you wouldn't pray it if you didn't, he did exactly what you asked him. He became the Lord of your life. And you know what? You have become what we call born again. Yes. You get a new nature in you, everything changes. Now, you may not understand immediately what happens, but I can tell you this, it'll start manifesting. Yes. It'll start showing up. And so uh, we're very thankful for you. We want you to let us know. There's a way there on the screen that you can let us know. and. If there's a person around you there close to where you are, tell them. It's, re it's really important that you tell somebody what you've done. If he said, if you're ashamed to confess him before men, he'll be ashamed to confess you before the Father and before the angels. So you have to tell somebody what you've done. You can't just do it and never, never mention it. Amen. Amen. You know, um, Eddie, somebody may be out there and they heard you lead that prayer, yeah. but they didn't pray it. But I'll tell you, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Right. And if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Amen. So be sensitive right now. And even as we're closing here, you can go ahead yeah. and pray that you prayer pray. and let us know that you did that. That's very Amen. important. It it's is so important. exciting. Every week, every, every week. week, every week. People come to the mm. Lord, and we're rejoicing every in time. that. Every time. Now, I, I, we're going we're gonna to close by sending a blessing your way. But I believe that there's somebody, maybe several somebodies out there, that need a healing touch from God in your life. Yes. So we, we pray right now. We extend to you God's healing anointing to yes. touch your body. I pray against cancer. I stand against arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis especially. I bind you migraines. Um, 
weakness in your body, just no energy. I, I bind that. I stand against that. Yes, in we Jesus speak healing name. into your body right now. Now, Father, we pray a blessing over every one of our friends out there. And in Jesus' name, meet them in a real special way. Yes, Manifest Father. yourself to them, Father. Let your favor rest on them in abundance. And we speak that blessing over your life mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Be Amen. blessed. Praise God. Well, it's been a joy, hasn't it? It's been good. Amen. We love you. Look forward to our next time together.